Guys, welcome to Crazy Burger. Having a look at um, one of the new releases on the Evercade. This is the Oliver Twins collection, which I sometimes like to know as the Dizzy collection, because it's mostly Dizzy games. Um, so let's have a little look at it. There are sorry, there are 11 games included. Um, some are old, some are, are some newish games. So one of the best things about the Evercade is the inclusion of these funky little uh, instruction booklets and tells you a little bit more about the game itself, um, about the Oliver Twins, um, from the kickstart from the early 80s on the console, Spectrum, Amstrad um, and all the sort of games that they've, they've created over the years. I think majority of the versions on here are probably all NES versions or sort of recently fixed versions. This is their first ever game, Super Robin Hood. Um, some of these are, you see, the version released is 2015. It's recently been found the source code has been found in his loft um, and they've just released it again. Um, some of the games are similar to games like this one Go Dizzy goes a little, looks a little bit like Quick Snacks I guess where you collect all the food and items it's like a puzzle style game. Um, Firehawk which I don't know an awful lot about. BMX Simulator which I had on the C64 which was fun but tough. Um, you've got Dream World Pogi which is Relative new game, it was made in 2017 and this probably was one of my favourite games on this system, it's really good fun. You've got the Dizzy Adventurer which um, seems like a best best of basically. Um, Mystery World Dizzy which I think this looks like a bit like Fantasy World Dizzy and Treasure Island Dizzy. I really do like the funky little cartridges, This the design of this one is really nice just nice little touches like that that make it worthwhile uh, for collectors. Collectors, sorry. It's nice. Let's get looking at it. So this is the the cell, which looks really nice. Um, you've got Treasure Island Dizzy, Wonderland Dizzy, BMX Simulator, Dizzy the Adventurer, Dream World Pogi, Fantastic Adventures of Dizzy, Firehawk, Go Dizzy Go, Mystery World Dizzy. Panic Dizzy, Super Robin Hood. So let's have a look at Treasure Island Dizzy to start with. So, this is probably one of the Dizzy games that I played the most, but on the C64, this would be the NES version, I believe. Which actually looks really nice, it looks a lot better than the C64 version. Um, so basically, it's these games are quite simple. You pick up things, you solve puzzles. For instance, you pick up the use the A button to pick up items. This one's quite a simple puzzle to get you started to get the idea. Um, you can collect coins, which don't touch the bees. They make the controls go backwards. And don't touch the fire as well. That will kill you. Um, which obviously brings you to the annoying fact that this game is you only have one life. It makes it really difficult, really frustrating. This is probably, graphically, I think this is probably one of the best uh, versions on here. It looks really nice. Um, I think it would have probably been better if it was more lives, or infinite lives, maybe. Now, here's one of the puzzles you need to watch. This is a portcullis that will kill you if you land. You can see it, it's here. It will fall. Now, look, this is probably pure trial and error, which it was back in the day, you didn't have save points and um, there's also one here up above so you need to be careful of that so this game is about exploring, trial and error, find items that you need so this is a little bit later on in the level where I've sort of got the snorkel and a few other things which you can then go back to the start and you can go under the water but don't touch the fish, you will die don't touch anything basically, anything that looks as if it might kill you. Don't touch it. You need to be careful you don't drop the snorkel while you're in the water as well, which is very, very easy to do. You will die instantly. So there's items down here that you need to collect. And this is probably one of the most frustrating parts that I remember in the game, trying to find where the, the, the jump points are. Oh, 
So we obviously need that dynamite for the main way back there, but I'm not sure how to get to it. Um, heavy weight, aha. Nope, didn't do anything. Oh no, I better not drop it anymore or I'm going to die. So this is Treasure Island Dizzy. I think this is probably the best looking game of the lot, but let's have a look at the other titles in the set. Wonderland Dizzy. So this is probably one of these ones that's been found recently and done up. I think sometimes it's better it's full screen, sometimes not, the, the stretches out the, the text a little bit. So this is Wonderland Dizzy. I think generally when you played one Dizzy game you played all of them. These are a lot of the, these later games was um, about collecting stars. So you basically press the button to pick up the, the items. This is a smoker's pipe. And generally you're giving them to other people. Oh! Whoops! Oh, so this one's a little bit different, whereas you actually have lives. And you get to play as Daisy as well. Usually you're actually trying to rescue Daisy. Collect all the stars. Um, collect all the things. Cup of holy water. So I've not played this one very often or ever, so I don't recognise it either. Uh oh. And don't do that. So next, that uh, oh BMX simulator. So this one's a little bit different from obviously the Disney games. Seems a bit of a strange inclusion, but obviously this is still um, made by the Oliver Twins. But it's tricky. This is again. This is the SNES version. I have played the um, the Commodore 64 version, and it's, it's tricky. Um, but once you get into a rhythm, it's it's actually all right. But I think that the D-pad makes this game actually quite tricky to do. So I think I, I've, I've kind of made that actually look quite easy. It does get quite addictive, especially if you get better at it, but it gets tricky because there's... You basically hit anything here, you can crash. Which you'll see soon enough. So you use the, the banks to sort of... Oh, well I've just crashed. So you use the banks to sort of help you steer you around. And there, there you can see one of the problems with the game, it's too easy to crash and it, it makes it really difficult and frustrating. <laughs> yeah, you, you do get a little bit frustrated and after the, the levels you've got so little time and then the gets game over and you need to start again. I do like this game but it takes a lot of patience. So next we have Dizzy the Adventurer. I'll have to be honest, I don't really recognise this one. So anyone that's a Dizzy fan back in the day will know that Dizzy was the first game, and then it was Treasure Island Dizzy, then Fantasy World Dizzy. Um, but they changed it a little bit on the consoles from the home computers. There's a few different variations of games. Um, this is probably another one of the ones. <laughs> so you had the Let's Play Dizzy funky thing. So, yeah, I've, I've definitely played this one. I think I've played it fairly recently, but um, some of the puzzles are quite straightforward. So you can see you've got straw, match, bucket of water, so this one's a bit more intuitive where you can pick the item that you want to actually drop. Okay, so there you've got the head, and we need to set it alight with uh, the match. And it tells you what's going to happen if you got it right, so then you need to like, put the, the fire out with the bucket of water. And voila, we've passed the first part. So this, I like this one, it gives you an introduction to, to sort of settle you down and get the hang of it. There's some jumping parts can be a bit tricky. You see all the, the different yoke folk that are involved in the game where you can talk to or try and wake up. Come on Dozy, wake up. There's quite a lot of talking and stuff going on. But I quite like this one, this is possibly a little bit better than the last one I played. You can see you can then use these things to bounce up. 
and collect. Oh, but you can't stand there forever because you will fall through. So make sure you pick up the item quickly. Ah, boom. So in the other games it looked like you probably couldn't touch these creatures, but you actually need to help this uh, line. He's got a sword. He's got a thorn. So I guess there'll be something they'll be we'll have to find to help him later on in the game. And there's Denzel. Oops, I mean that. Ah, oh, Denzel. So he needs help to get into the cave, which you need some uh, explosives. Oh! Again, this one's quite fun. I'll be looking forward to actually exploring this one a little bit more, for sure. Let's have a look at the next one. So, Dream World Pogi. This is uh, a relatively new game, um, I guess done by Kickstarter. Um, but this one is really good fun. Let's have a look. So, relatively simple, you've got jump button, collect all the stars to progress through the level. Now, been playing this and it reminds me massively of Mayhem in Monsterland on the Commodore 64, which is very similar where you need to sort of progress through the game by collecting the stars. And it's clearly quite a very SNES-like game, but it's good, it's really, really good fun. I'd say this is possibly the, the game that I've enjoyed the most so far. Quite simple stuff, I guess, but it's it's fun and it's addictive. You can see that's the that's the the end of level, but you need to collect as many stars as you can for a, the best rating and not touch the creatures and die. But yeah, this is very good fun. Anybody, anyone can pick this up as well, so you can get your kids involved. Get them into retro gaming, get them playing, and enjoy it, it's fun. So a nice, yeah, sort of easy start for the, this game. But yeah, you can see, it does get harder, especially if you're clumsy. You see, if you just go straight to the end of the level, you can just drop down, and it's complete. I see, this is... Possibly my favourite game I'd say so far. Highly impressed with it. Really fun and addictive stuff. So, Fantastic Adventures of Dizzy. You can look at the actual cover art of that. Is actually the cover art for Fantasy World Dizzy, which was the third game in the series, which I'm kind of confused about because it's not the same game. But it's definitely the cover art for it. And but I think, as I said earlier, they definitely changed. Um, some of the, the styles for the, the console versions. So not understand why they've done that, but um So this one is pretty much the same old story. Daisy has been captured by the evil wizard. And Daisy has to rescue her. So pretty standard stuff. But this is a pretty good version though. I, this one somehow reminds me of I'm not sure if they actually released this on the Mega Drive. Because it kind of looks familiar. So you actually use sort of apples and things to, to recover your health. Be careful of the fire items you lose. So use the key to exit the door. And see familiar territory in the Dizzy World. So now collecting stars. This version looks good, I'm really looking forward to exploring this. I've not played this version uh, very much. Uh, so you've actually got, this time you've actually got a health bar, rather than um, just a life. If you get touched with these, you would die in other games, but it's a health bar for a change. Which I think is actually quite a nice touch. It sort of takes a little bit of frustration out of the game. See, I've now lost that, so now we've got some different keys. You collect, you want to know what they are, you can press the select button, it tells you what you're holding and what the key is actually for, which is cool. Um, again, what's the stars? Still at 244 to find, that's crazy. See, this one looks really good, I think. Oh, ah, so don't do that. 
so well off. Oh, I think they know what to do here. So, I th oh, I've died. So, guys, if you don't like any Dizzy games or you never liked them back in the day, then you're never going to pick this up and like it. I think they were very popular, and especially in the UK, they were massively popular games at the time. And I remember talking to my friends at how you done this bit and that, but the one of the advantages you have in the Evercade is you can save state, so it should take a massive uh, amount of frustration away from actually playing the games. Okay, next is Firehawk, which I definitely don't recall playing. So, as far as I'm aware, this is obviously kind of a shoot em up, very much in the style of like Desert Strike, Jungle Strike, that kind of thing. Um, which we need to rescue. Oops, don't get shot at. Rescue some hostages, I guess. The controls are a bit tricky. Okay, I'm not doing too well here. So I need to try and. Oh, I'm not sure what I'm doing here. <laughs> Dying! <laughs> so, I guess I need to rescue the hostage. I need to figure out what the controls are. Pretty tricky. I think probably my best, uh, best idea to try and destroy everything first before I rescue anybody. It's quite fun, I guess, once you actually get into it. But the control systems are a little bit strange. I'm not really getting the gist of it just yet. Um, it looks nice enough, I guess. Okay, I think I need to read the instructions to figure out what exactly I'm supposed to be doing. But it's definitely not dying. <laughs> so that's tricky. Okay, here ha we have Go Does He Go, which kind of think. This was a bit like quick snacks, if I recall, but maybe not. So it's a fairly simple puzzle game, which you collect uh, all the fruit in the maze and avoid the, the animals or monsters or fishy things. Quick, if I recall, quick snacks was kind of similar. You sort of collected all the, the sort of food. So it's a little bit, I guess, like food fight. Collect all the food and progress to the next level. It's actually quite good. It's quite good deductive fun. So this is the the bonus stage, where you have a certain amount of time to collect all the oranges. You just need to progress through as quick as you can. You can only go a certain direction though. And hopefully complete in time. Yeah, complete. Yeah, I'm quite liking that. That's actually quite good fun. I'm pretty sure I'll be playing this quite a lot. So, here we have Mystery World Dizzy. Now, I think led to believe this is a sort of reimagining. See, the, the year is 2018 that it's been made, but if I recall, this is actually a reimagining of Fantasy World Dizzy. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure this is... This is a reworking of Fantasy World Dizzy, I'm pretty sure it is. So Fantasy World Dizzy, yeah it is. So Fantasy World Dizzy was the third episode in the series. So you're sort of stuck in a dungeon here, you need to try and escape. Yeah, so it's, it's a little bit different to the original. Um, but I don't recall the original had you collecting stars. And you can only like, carry two things at a time. So I guess I need the... Oops. So some of the games, the controls are a little bit tricky. So we need to escape this by using... Yeah, the jug of water. So this one's a little bit tricky, whereas, you know, the, the item that's in your control has to be at the start. Or you're just scrolling through, so it can be a little bit frustrating in that aspect. Um, but this looks quite nice, it looks good fun, it's very... Very cool looking. And this is the 
when you leave the, the bread for the, the mouse so it'll run away then you can get past yeah I do remember some things from the 90s so yeah I'm definitely looking forward to playing this so for recall if you jump onto this crocodile he will snap you up um, which you, I think you need to get, anyway, no, that's later in the game, you need to get rope to tie up his, his mouth, if I recall. But yeah, this is, this is a really good version. Controls are still very tricky though. I don't think the, the games were ever renowned for being particularly amazing to control. It's all these games like trial and error and very, be, be careful. Imagine what it was like trying to play with a joystick. At least playing with the D-pad, I think it's actually a lot easier. And you'll have save states, so it'll make things easier. Yes, I'm definitely loving this one. You can see you've got some of the characters who'll give you some advice or probably something to do. Okay, here we got Panic Dizzy. This is a puzzler, which... Again, I think it's a reimagining of a, an older game, but I, I, I can't really remember. So, there's different games in here. There is P Picture Perfect, which you need to shuffle about uh, pictures. There's Puzzle Bath, where I think you need to collect numbers, dice, and collect like dice. Match more, and Four Suits. Again, I'm not entirely sure of how some of these games actually work. So you need to go around collecting all the the numbers in the right order to finish it. Like that. So it can be fun is if you've got some spare time to sit and play some puzzle games then it can be okay. But I'll say this is definitely my least favourite game of the lot. Okay and lastly we've got the game that was apparently the first game that the Oliver Twins actually made was Super Robin Hood. We actually had this game I think on a Quattro Adventure Pack which actually included the original Dizzy, this game and a couple others. So I definitely have played it many years ago, maybe nearly 30 years ago perhaps. I believe this again is most likely going to be the NES version. I think it's graphically better than um, the Commodore 64 version. So, pretty uh, simple. You've got B for jumping, you've got your bow and arrow, press A. Pretty simple stuff, but. Whoops. So, obviously, need to try and beat this guy, but. Yeah. This game actually looks quite good fun. So you need to collect oh dear. So you need to collect the keys to open this door here. Which opens automatically as soon as you get the key, which is a bit bizarre, but anyway, it's done. So there's plenty of obstacles that you need to get past. So it can be tricky. You can see the some of the bad guys take more than one hit. So we need to avoid the fire from there. Or hit it. <laughs> yeah, this, I reckon this could be quite fun. At least um, the save points are quite good. You don't go all the way back to start, which kind of surprises me. Oh, need to kill that. See, I think this would be actually really good fun. I'm going to definitely get stuck into this one as well. It's a very high quality um, cartridge pack here, I think, that will take up a lot of hours uh, gameplay time, for sure. Again, like I said, if you're not really into the Dizzy games, then uh, this is never going to convert you. But I'd highly recommend them if you do like Dizzy and you're interested in it, this is brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. It's going to take you weeks to actually complete and go through these. Enjoyable, I'm sure. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Highly recommend you folks. Guys, please like, subscribe. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Bye for now.